Okay. So uh, why don't we uh, begin now? It's uh, about a minute past 10. I'm Matt Clare from the CPI. I'm being joined by Mike Russo from the CPI. Uh, we're here today to talk about CrowdMark, a uh, tool that's now integrated into Sakai's platform. I'll give you uh, the rundown of uh, what it is, um, why you might want to use it, and um, hopefully uh, make, help you make an informed choice about such a tool with very limited time to do so for the fall duration. If you have uh, questions along the way, you're welcome to uh, uh, raise a hand, send a message in the chat, or if those aren't working, uh, grab the mic and interrupt. Uh, we'll be better off with a question, I'm sure. But otherwise, um, I'd like to begin by showing you a brief video, and hopefully you will hear the audio. And if it doesn't, um, that's OK. We'll just proceed. But if you don't hear the audio to the, day, to the start, um, please let me know. So So CrowdMark's done a great job of introducing their product. It's certainly in their interest. I'm going to screen this uh, one minute video for you so you can get a brief overview of what we're in for. Mm, not hearing any audio, Matt. Not hearing audio. I, and apparently when I uh, change tabs, Hmm. OK, that's fine. Um, as long as you hear my audio, we'll be OK. So our challenge is often to get our marketing group together to mark things uh, online. And um, the opportunity with CrowdMark is you can give individual people in your marketing team the chance to mark a specific question. I could even be assigned the right uh, mark grade or TA to the right question. Here's what the actual evaluation or grading uh, interface can look like. The idea of having a Comment uh, library is really helpful and uh, key efficiency to using CrowdMark to give feedback quickly. It, of course, can give feedback or uh, analytics on the actual course grading itself. And it, most critically for us right now, it gives us a way to move paper back and forth between student instructor, marketing team, and back to the student uh, remotely. That's their fancy video. Apologies for the uh, audio, but hopefully uh, my simultaneous uh, translation worked on your end. Um, in three steps, CrowdMark allows you to prepare homework for students to uh, respond to. It uh, allows the students to submit that work. And uh, you can grade that work and give rich feedback um, within the CrowdMark interface. Thanks for sharing that video, Mike. So that's uh, the early thumbnail of what CrowdMark is, but why CrowdMark? Well, at this particular time, uh, CrowdMark is better at that particular task than the tools we have access to at Brock University today. So uh, we don't have access to our physical Dropboxes at the moment. They were pretty robust. They would take things in at any time. You could put in a blue paper, white paper, yellow paper, many papers, one paper, Dropboxes are very flexible. Unfortunately, we can't uh, rely on student access to the campus at the moment. An alternative might be to get students to take pictures of their work and submit that through Sakai. That's sort of how CrowdMark works. Unfortunately, the way that Sakai would handle that would be uh, 20 Im loose images um, that would be difficult to work through, likely with names that don't make a lot of sense and could be a sequence. Same with OneDrive or maybe even email submissions. And uh, one could give students instructions on how to take those 20 images and 
make them more meaningful, combine them in the PDF, or use a website like Canva or PowerPoint. But the uh, instructions for a task like that may actually take longer to uh, execute than the task itself. That's not ideal. So one of the reasons that uh, CrowdMark is loosely integrated with Sakai is to address all of that stuff. CrowdMark is a, a Canadian company created by a U of T prof. Uh, that used it for the uh, Canadian Open Mathematics Challenge or created it to address the challenge of the Canadian Open Mathematics Challenge. It's used at U of T, uh, URLU, UBC, Ryerson, Western, a lot of the uh, mostly math and engineering focused schools in Canada, at least the parts of those schools, uh, are using it. The assignments themselves could include student responses in the format of scientific or mathematic notation or even musical notation. Students can label artifacts and give those back, a particular uh, common task that we had students do when they could submit paper, but uh, is particularly challenging in comparison digitally. And anything else that might be created on paper. I'm, I can't begin to think of the number of uh, interesting and varied assignment types we have at Brock University. But if they are submittable on paper, CrowdMark can support that. Instructors can create uh, CrowdMark courses based on their active Sakai courses, allowing the enrollment information from Sakai to be transitioned into CrowdMark, and we'll look at that in a moment. Makes it easy to distribute and collect student work, and the uh, grading teams is something that, in particular, CrowdMark uh, strives to do well because the having a single spot to mark is important, and the idea of assigning a grading team across one one uh, submitted assignment, so one marker grader could do question one, the other two and three, etc. And of course, provides online feedback. The way one can set up an account at Brock University with CrowdMark, there's a couple ways, but it boils down to visiting crowdmark.com and choosing to sign in. You would then search in the uh, Your School box uh, for Brock and choose Brock University. That will send you off to uh, the Brock University login page or straight to that third authorization screen there, depending if you're already signed into Sakai or something else at that point or not. But if you aren't signed in the Sakai, I'll ask you to do that sign in. And then this final window here is an authorization. That is the uh, little techy looking uh, authorization for Sakai for a remote tool to import your class roster. So it's not uh, integration into the assignments tool. It's not integration uh, as a tool itself in Sakai, but it does draw from Sakai's uh, enrollment information to create accounts. In the end, you have to have a password on the uh, CrowdMark end as well, but there are ways to recover that should it be uh, uh, lost, and it does uh, have that relationship back to uh, your Sakai account for things like recovery. CPI is happy to help with any account issues. Well, the other thing that's uh, worth noting is CrowdMark very kindly looks up instructor accounts to make sure they're actually instructor accounts by hand. Um, so that they um, uh, may be delayed in setting up actual instructor access. Um, we've figured out some tricks to get around that too, but usually they're pretty good. And it's nice that they're doing that by hand and not relying on something that might be spurious, especially when we talk about uh, course coordinators and other uh, roles. So I wanted to share uh, the student experience with you before I shared the instructor experience. Um, the student experience is nice and simple which is, of course, the intent. Uh, I think a lot of submission activities are much easier for the student than the people that have to market. Uh, so that's the case here as well. I've got two videos prepared uh, with no audio this time. And the uh, first one is the mobile experience for submitting a particular assignment. And then I've got an abbreviated version of the digital experience. One of, the, I think, the strengths of CrowdMark is that it allows the student, the submitting student, to use the technologies and approaches that work for them and just expects an outcome. And when you think about the many, many platforms that are out there, uh, having someone identify what works for them and uh, is uh, be successful for them is probably the best approach versus you know a dozen different versions of instructions. So the student will can either make their account, as I just showed earlier, uh, 
early in the in the course, or they can wait till they get their first email saying an assignment's been assigned. Either way is fine. You can direct them there in your syllabus or wait to the first email. Um, I will uh, highlight that in uh, setting up a CrowdMark uh, assignment is worth giving students to practice. But if I can play this video, I'll show you what a student experience might be submitting the CrowdMark on a mobile device. So the CrowdMark website, choosing the assignment. Here's the instructions that assuming the assignment's already printed in this case. And completed. Picture taken. And uploaded. And then the student presses submit. So if uh, in my case, I had already printed that, I had filled it out and been ready to submit at that point. If I had uh, printed it on um, uh, with accidentally printed at 200% and it spanned across two pages, then I could still submit that. Um, Crowdmark would have allowed me to add additional pages, uh, which is very uh, practical, especially what can happen when students have to print things out and respond. It will take my uh, one, two, or more pages and present them as a single response to that question, where other models where we might give students um, a, a hard 10-page uh, document or something like that don't allow for expansion. They handle that pretty well. So that was a digital experience, and I'll just back up a bit. I already printed it and filled it out. Go to the question with my mobile phone, click on drag, drop, or take a picture. I get my camera up. Take a picture. Choose to use it. And then press submit. So that's the uh, more physical um, mobile version of this. Uh, similarly, if a student is comfortable working uh, all digitally on their computer, they could, uh, it's a different assignment here, being asked to draw a graph. So uh, our student, Matt Claire Jr., is going to launch Microsoft Paint, create their graph. Do some of the labeling. Save it. And then, oh, that's an important step. Save it on their computer. Now it's ready to submit, although I don't think they're going to get full marks. Uh, back to CrowdMark. Pick up where that uh, picture was saved. And submit. So that, for that exact same assignment, one student could do it uh, with a mobile phone, another student could do it all digitally on their laptop, their personal computer. This particular example also asks for a written submission. And in this case, that second question written submission could be a Word document saved as a PDF and uploaded as well. Um, generally, the more paper based responses are uh, well handled in CrowdMark. And if you want an essay, you might prefer to use Sakai with that, especially with Turing integration. But um, if one chooses to add a PDF alongside, one can certainly do that. And that's an example here. So we're supporting the ways that work for students. And um, by having things like a sample uh, assessment, we can let students practice what works for them before it counts. And then as instructors, instructors we can just expect an outcome and know that students are well supported it and proceed on the market. So that's the student experience. Let's jump over to the instructor experience. So here's my uh, demo course in the instructor experience. So one important thing to keep in mind is the toggles between the Sakai uh, version of CrowdMark and the non-LMS version. You can manually control the enrollment in the CrowdMark site uh, in the non-LMS version, or 
you can switch into the Sakai version. Uh, you'll be at one or the other when you first log in, likely the Sakai version. And with the Sakai version, you can sync your rosters from Sakai and populate those courses. That's great to have. On the non-LMS side, you can make a practice assignment. You can experiment with CrowdMark. You can make uh, uh, courses that no one ever has access to. You can make a course that your other non-Brock email has access to as a student. If you really want to experiment with things, it's useful for that. And there is a challenge we have right now with our this being one of our, our newest tools at Brock University and really just brought online as we lost access to those um, drop boxes. We don't have a uh, digital to digital way to bring grades home at the moment. And Mike and I are working on that, credit mostly to Mike on that. Um, there are ways to massage the uh, CSV that comes out of uh, CrowdMark today. Stay tuned. We think we can do better than that. But it's not like those grades will be stuck in CrowdMark, but the CSV export does uh, take a little bit of a reformatting to bring it in the Sakai. You could bring the grades over manually. We hope to do better, but hang on for that. So that's the two areas in CrowdMark, the non-LMS and the Sakai integrated one. Creating an assignment. Um, when you're inside the CrowdMark interface and you've added that first assignment or had that first course, pardon me, you can then create an assignment. It needs a title. And who's going to be taking this? We'll assume the whole course because it's definitely the easiest scenario. And then we'll be prompted to do an administered uh, assignment or an assigned assignment. Administered is face to face. So we'll be doing assigned assignments with CrowdMark um, for the foreseeable future. We choose a due date. Availability is when you choose to distribute it. Due date is the last moment the students can submit. You can set a late penalty. It's automatically applied. Uh, you don't have to set a late penalty. And remember, late penalties have to be communicated in your course syllabus. But you can set one that's automatically applied inside CrowdMark. You could also optionally add a, a time limit, a, a duration constraint to the assessment in here. So when they begin, they only have this much time. Or again, they'll have uh, unlimited time from when they are assigned it uh, until the due date. Group assignments are a possibility. We're not going to talk about those uh, on this first run. Now we have our actual assignment created. Here's how questions are added. We've got a uh, place for a supplemental description. Maybe it's even describing a case, depending on what you're uh, assigned to your students. In this case, we're adding an exam script. And then the questions beneath that are, um, you can add uh, markdown formatting to it. Uh, jumps right to this example here. But in that question area, we'll go back to uh, momentarily. So that would be LaTeX for those in the know. Um, there's where the question composition is. So that could be simple and uh, stems of questions of asking students to um, create something uh, print and respond to something. Uh, if you want to have mathematical equations uh, or uh, scientific ones as well, uh, if those can be expressed in LaTeX, LaTeX being a uh, common uh, base expression of those formats, you can insert that based on the uh, $2 signs at either end example that we just saw. Um, there are lots of ways that, to construct LaTeX markup. Uh, I suspect if um, you're interested in that, you already have a preferred way to construct LaTeX, but uh, if, you, if you have a question about how to do that, please let us know. Um, it's certainly one of the benefits of using CrowdMark. Images and PDFs can be added as well. You can see at the bottom there, there's an attached files like there was at the top. And this is our uh, question one, uh, 10 points. The bonus concepts an option as well. And here's a preview of what that would look like to students. So very similar to the view we saw earlier, but it's nice that instructors can preview this, of course. There's that LaTeX markup expressed uh, properly. 
a nice thing about using LaTeX is if students print it on a nice high res printer, they'll get a really crisp version of the formula. Now we've constructed that uh, remote exam in this case. There's that button to distribute to students, or we could schedule it to go to students. We don't need to actually edit anything. Um, so that purple distribution button would send an email to all of our students enrolled through the various means, or we can schedule that. The uh, grading experience to look at at a moment, um, you can't actually grade the submissions until the due date passes, which can be a challenge at times. So that's creating an assignment. So we, I mentioned that we can do the uh, markup for LaTeX. You can have things uh, italicized, bolded, uh, set headings. You can add uh, links and even include uh, images and PDFs as well. There's that attach option at the bottom. You don't have to um, be conversant with this markup they use there. Oh. Um, once you attach it, it will insert it for you. And then the grading side. One thing that I've uh, seen have a big effect on instructors' use of these kinds of tools is once uh, marketing teams are exposed to simple online marking where the artifact submitted by a student can be immediately marked up, it's a, a big advantage for the, that marketing team. And to be frank, it's hard to go back from that moment. Uh, so here's hoping that if we do have success with CrowdRock this year, we can continue using it after our first year. But here is the student uh, image submission of their formula. The marker grader, the instructor, can use those markup items on the left to circle, drop checks, highlight with shapes, and uh, highlight again with just a freeform uh, transparent blob. If the markup is incorrect, you can click anything with a trash can to take it away. And then at the top, there's that uh, comment box where you can drop a comment, and that will go into your comment library. So as marker graders, instructors are going through this, they'll start to build up a really useful comment library, especially if they're only doing one question, and they can just drag those out as they uh, reoccur. So if there's a, a common theme on student submissions, they can be uh, pulled out from that library in this fancy video. They even have a, a, a chart to give feedback, which is great. On the right is where you can input the score and press enter. And you can use keyboard for that. One of the reasons there's an on-screen keyboard is this interface can actually work really well on a tablet or touch device without having to um, get out a keyboard. So if you were to mark these all on your iPad, you can have a very paper-like experience, um, including even just typing in, tapping in a grade at the end and never have to have a keyboard or sit at a device and get that nice stylus input. I think that's the contents of this uh, assignment. And you can see moving down to a, a second page there. Mike. So I don't want to uh, interrupt the grading thing, but I think you're right at the end of it. Uh, Anton is asking an interesting question about different versions of the scripts being distributed to students. Mm. So there's no uh, dynamic questions that I'm aware of, but one can uh, subdivide your uh, course into different groups. So if you prepared uh, slightly different scripts, you can give those uh, subgroups slightly different scripts. Um, that's a, a positive and negative, or I guess a, I guess a positive from a negative. With, with our lack of gradebook integration at the moment, um, you would get uh, two different grades for those two groups. And given that you have to import them back into Sakai, you can combine them back on the way or wherever you're doing your grading. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's not immediately possible to do dynamic questions, but you can um, arbitrarily, there's a dialogue, just give me a couple groups. Um, split up your groups in CrowdMark itself. And then yeah. theoretically distribute different scripts, just like you may in the gym, make sure students who are next to each other have different versions of the exam, right? Exactly. Great question. Hmm. 
So um, got another one of my, uh, oh, this is an example of grading, but oh, it's the same one. Where's mine? I was going to go into my uh, live example so you guys can see CrowdMark in action. And somehow convinced PowerPoint that I don't need it at the moment. So here is my CrowdMark account, and I've, uh, I'm in the non-LMS area, so I can do some practicing, but, but I can also jump back into my Sakai-based one. And here's my Rock University demo course, and I've got uh, five assignments here. Um, I have to be careful that the only the ones that I've actually closed, I'm going to show you marking in, because uh, you can't be marking on live assignments, but I will show you this demo uh, of jazz music composition. Here's uh, what I assigned to students to, actually that's a submission. I guess I did close this one. Um, that's uh, um, a music composition assignment where I gave students the uh, uh, musical staff and asked them to, to complete a chord change on there. I've got a calculus example which again, I'm going into the feedback when I should go into the question itself. Uh, I want my preview. Well, that's why. Um, so there's my calculus one. And then I think I closed the humanity, the, uh, humanity one, which I've been using consistently. So here is uh, a submission from a student. I go into my overview. I have it revealed that this is uh, Ambrusso's submission. I can uh, give some level of feedback to submission. Um, Save that, and I believe this is marked at 25, so I'm going to give it a uh, two for accurately identifying arms, and I can move on to my next submission. And I don't have any submissions for these students, but if I jump up here, I can jump right to the next actual submission. That's in the overview grid. And looks like I only have, oh, Norman uh, made a submission. Norman, pardon me, made a submission. And leave a comment. Mike, you want to say something? Nope, I'm sorry, that's a stale hand. I'm going to give Norbeck a zero at this point. So that's my grading experience. If I go back to the, uh, here's, here's the uh, actual questions I created and I can preview that. Just confirm I uh, assigned what I intended to assign and then my results at the bottom. And here I get a statistical distribution of uh, grades so far. And I can email back grades to students and I can export that and you can download their booklets in PDF if I want to keep records somewhere outside of CrowdMark. So I've got some uh, final uh, things to remember about CrowdMark, things to uh, keep in mind when you construct your CrowdMark uh, assignments, but that is the student experience and the instructor grading experience. So um, hopefully that gave you some ideas and some questions you're going to have about CrowdMark. So I see there's one in the chat, happy to um, explore different things for you and explore specific interests you may have for CrowdMark. We've got me. one question in the um, the chat. Matt, can you go back to the overview grid for the uh, this assignment? Mm -hmm. So that was in the grading interface for the question one of one and the overview grid. So I think uh, 
Melikov, you're referring to the numbers in the overview grid here, and I, uh, the numbers in green, uh, that's the score they got on the question as opposed to multiple submissions. My understanding is that the student only ever gets one submission. They can edit it up to the point of actually finally submitting, but there'll only ever be one artifact that the student submitted. That's exactly that's exactly the case. And um, the ability to resubmit is uh, both, I think, uh, uh, an affordance to students in just their uh, learning, but on a more practical level, if a student begins a active submission, not they start today and try again in a week from now, but they're currently trying to submit something, and they do question one, two, and three in their laptop, and then question four is clearly one they need to take a picture of with their uh, smartphone, they can actually pick up that active uh, submission or resubmit, depending on what their um, practice is, um, as they go. So the uh, resubmission, I think, is uh, you know making sure students have an opportunity to be their best. That's important. But on a more practical level, if they're responding on one device and the dynamics of paper mean that they need to employ another device and switch, that ability to pick up and resubmit uh, helps out with those moments. You go to my calculus example. Preview the questions. So here's the uh, calculus questions I constructed. Um, find the inverse function of this uh, LaTeX formula. I can preview it right here or preview the full assessment. Matt, Anton is asking about uh, an introductory run on Crowdmark for his students. Do you think it's a good idea to post an introductory file or video for students on how to use Crowdmark? Uh, hi, um, th there is one provided by uh, Crowdmark itself, which I'll have a link at the end, and I'll drop uh, all the links at the end into the chat um, to make sure it's easy for people to grab. That, I think, is a, is a nice summary video. Um, a in practice assignment or multiple is definitely a good idea. And uh, introductory video, if you want to make one specifically for your course, I think that would always be a benefit. Um, one can evaluate uh, their own efforts versus that value. I think um, if as long as you have a practice assignment um, and some clear instructions, I would think that's sufficient. But I am at no means talking you out of making a nice uh, your course context focused uh, introductory video for it. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I'm just going to um, talk about this question instead of trying to type it. It's just going back to releasing the grades. So I'm noticing that Crowdmark defaults to marking question by question. So once we go through and we mark all of the student um, the student submissions, it doesn't send anything to the students. Um, can you do a bulk release where it would release all of them to the students at once, and how would I do that? Yes, it is a bulk release, so that is the results area, and then send grades to students. Um, that sends them an email, uh, releases it, and sends them an email, paying them to go back in the Crowdmark and check for their uh, numerical grade, their uh, grade in the whole assignment, and of course their feedback is also stored in Crowdmark, all marked up. Um, you can export that and bring it home to Sakai, for lack of a better term, with a little bit of massaging. That could be one way to release it without the feedback, but the um, as Crowdmark intends way is to press this send grades to students button. Everyone gets an email and it's prompted to come back in and check for their feedback. Does that make sense? And I sense you may have a follow up questions, Natasha. Yes, yeah, sorry. I just um, one other thing, like say you get the kids who are working out some of the kinks and they uploaded, you know, a blank document and they think they've submitted the file. They fitted their uh, they've uploaded the wrong one. So then I guess there is a way that you can just release their mark for that grade and that submission, like just for that question and say, hey, re-upload a file. Has that ever come up? Um, not firsthand. Um, I, I'm certain that that scenario has certainly come up across Crowdmark's use. Um, students 
do get previews of what they're submitting. I'm going to see if I can quickly jump back to our uh, student submission example here. So I think um, that, well, I almost had one there. I think that scenario is worth considering, and I, I do think it will happen um, to an extent. Um, the students missed a couple of signals in that process, and the grading team can make a decision if, how they want to treat uh, the student's uh, a future in that condition. Because um, there is a preview here. Uh, maybe I took, uh, maybe I saved two versions and they both kind of look like that. And one's correct, but there is a preview to help students do the right thing and they can do multiple submissions. So uh, I would leave that the instructor's discretion there. If the assignment is due or past due, pardon me, I'm not familiar offhand, and Mike, if you've had a chance to play with this yet, if there's a um, a way to um, require resubmission for one student exclusively, like we have in Sakai, but um, there's certainly a number of uh, offline, out of channel workarounds. Um, happy to follow up with that one uh, either after this session or when it occurs, if, if you give me a signal there. Yeah, just echoing that I. I think um, at some level they're trying to be simple and straightforward and replicate that paper based process. So it's one kind of thing comes in, one kind of thing goes out. Um, I think if you were having a student who specifically had a challenge and needed to resubmit, um, you would need to out of band receive that or give them specific access to a question. I don't think you can force resubmit for a single individual. Um, but just to clarify, for your question about releasing of grades, it's a bulk release of grades only. There is no kind of question by question release. It's uh, effectively just like if you had an exam script, you would be handing the whole script over with a big thud on everyone's desk as opposed to kind of a question <laughs> by question situation. Thanks for clarifying that. I dropped in the uh, resource links I wanted to share at the end into the uh, chat so that's easier for people to get their uh, mouse is on. <laughs> As I mentioned, uh, Crowdmark is uh, pretty popular with uh, math and engineering schools across universities in Canada and North America. Um, I'm particularly interested in how it can be used in the arts because I know that that is a new area of application for Crowdmark and one I hope that Brock can demonstrate, but um, I've had the opportunity to work with instructors that have used this tool um, for particular engineering submissions, and uh, you would uh, struggle to tell them they would, weren't able to do marking through this interface anymore. It had that kind of transform, transformative experience with them. So I'll uh, bail out of importing a, a Sakai course, but I'll go almost to the last step here because that's a very good question about how one might import from Sakai. Um, this does, uh, you can re-import, um, and it is a moment in time perspective on your Sakai enrollment, and that can change uh, certainly up to the add drop date and sometimes afterwards. I'll also uh, show you how you can add your marker graders. So in my, my Sakai version of Proudmark, I've pressed the import a course option. Here are all my uh, active courses. Um, which are you know, not exactly the best example. I will click on one of those and choose import course. Just as a minor point of clarification for everyone, the, the courses that appear there need to be published and they need to be of type course. So if you were, say, working on a project site, which doesn't happen often, they won't appear there. Um, but what will happen more often is that your site was not yet published. So it needs to be a published course in Sakai before you'll see it in that list. Thanks. And uh, once it's imported, you can start creating your assessments and add your team. Um, in this case, it will not be pulling over your mark readers to my knowledge. Mike, you want to correct me if I'm wrong? Okay. Um, so you'll Not add in, excellent. You'll add in their email address. Yeah. 
and then choose a role for them, instructor, facilitator, grader, uploader. Uh, uploader doesn't really apply for us at all. Um, and uh, instructor, I think, is self-explanatory. Grader and facilitator, a uh, subset of permissions, and really grader and facilitator are there to distinguish from each other. And not much more functionality difference between the two other than maybe some person's not a grader, they're a facilitator. You add them, they'll get an email, and they'll be added to uh, Crowdmark. Uh, for your course. If they have an existing account, they're good to go. If they don't, they'll be prompted to create one. Uh, thanks, Natasha. Uh, note, if the uh, student has submitted the response before the due date, lots of opportunity for them to make any corrections they want, uh, to, re to review what they submitted, etc. If it's past the due date, uh, my current knowledge is there isn't a way for them to uh, uh, change it or for us to do an individual resubmission, but that is a, a, a good thing for us to be more aware of in the CPI, and I'm happy to follow up for that one. But lots of opportunities before the submission. Okay. So uh, things to remember with Crowdmark. Students will need uh, one or more practice assignments, and um, it's always a good uh, practice to make question types that you intend to use. So if you are going to use LaTeX, if you are going to use paper-based responses, um, uh, pr sorry, print and markup, then respond kind of paper-based responses, include those in your practice assignment. It's one thing to ask students to draw a picture of themselves, et cetera, which I certainly would love to include because I certainly like fun practice assignments. But uh, you do want to include in those practices the actual ways you'll be assessing the students. Um, for example, if the students are required to print something, then they should be aware early in the process they need a printer um, or they need to find a digital way to replicate that. Um, the great affordance that Crowdmark gives us is we can expect outcomes from students and don't have to be prescriptive about the process. But part of that uh, methodology is we need to give them a lot of notice and the ability to practice that um, so that they, when it counts, they can easily um, be expected to do these tasks. Um, if you're using Crowdmark, I recommend that uh, practice assignment, the uh, additional time. So students are going to take more time to respond to a paper-based assignment than a multiple choice assignment. I think that's uh, obvious, but it's easy to forget as you construct or give timelines that uh, this is what I conceive of as 10 question response time period, um, but add into that some upload downloads, maybe some printing, worth keeping that in mind. And then because Crowdmark is a, a third party tool that has been uh, appropriately vetted by Brock, we rushed as fast as we could to do that this summer, um, but it is a, nevertheless a third party tool based in Canada. We do need to add some form of notice and collection notice to students somewhere in your course uh, site or syllabus. Uh, links in the chat for that, uh, a sample one. Um, but otherwise, uh, uh, I'm sure everyone's capable of constructing a, a, a notice of that collection, but you can copy the one that's linked on the CPI uh, EdTech Wiki as well. Remember the grade, students will get their feedback and the numeric grade in Crowdmark. Um, that numeric grade can come home to Brock University in Sakai with a little bit of massaging of the spreadsheet, but we're going to try and do our best to have a better solution than massaging a spreadsheet as uh, time keeps going. And uh, CPI is here to help. We've had some experience at uh, Brock and then across the team at other locations with Crowdmark, but it is the first time we've had it formally integrated with Sakai. Um, my thanks to both of our provosts over the summer for helping identify the need of uh, paper-based submissions and uh, our locked up drop boxes and working quickly to uh, help Brock acquire a way to fill this gap digitally. But it is a, a emergent tool for us. So we're all learning together and the uh, CPI is certainly interested in every issue you have because we want to know this better. Students resubmissions after the due date being a good example. Uh, I shared the link to these resources in the chat, but I'll put them back up there. Um, that's my prepared responses. I see uh, our presentation, pardon me. I see some questions in the chat. 
but I would um, give you uh, one last encouragement to at least try out Crowdmark, the uh, crowdmark.com sign in and then uh, choose Brock. We'll get you in there. You can make an account, make a dummy uh, course and play with it as much as you'd like. And uh, if it is appropriate, you can use it for your assign assignments in your course this fall. I appreciate there's little time to make that conclusion. So I'm going to jump into the chat. Mike, is there anything I should get to first? Uh, there's an interesting question from um, Natasha again. Um, that, yeah, I don't, I don't believe so. Uh, so the question is uh, for the recording, is there any way students can see their feedback? So that's marked up feedback and not their score, not their mark. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't believe so. You theoretically could not give them a score in Proudmark and just mark up, but uh, there's not fine grained controls uh, for specific components. You do have control over whether or not you want your students to see the grade distribution graphs, um, but I don't believe you can control the type of feedback you're giving. Um, Anton, I'm not quite sure I understand your use case. Can you maybe um, explain I can a little more? Guess that. Okay, um, okay so maybe, sure, go for it. Uh, maybe it's a... Uh, um, answer these nine questions and question 10 is draw this formula um, or uh, mark up this diagram. Uh, so, uh, and actually let's call the example, do these 49 questions and then do this last one. So clearly an example where if one had the human mark, uh, 49 questions or multiple choice, that's not a good use of uh, the technologies at our disposal. Um, best to have something like Sakai mark 49 multiple choice questions. Unfortunately, you would be creating, uh, to get that efficiency of those 49 questions, that would be two assignments, one in Sakai, one in Crowdmark. Um, there could be some kind of clever ways to line them up um, and then bring the grade home. You could um, uh, relatively easily go through your Sakai 49 questions. I, I see your uh, hand up, so I'll get you to clarify for me um, in a moment. But you can take your 49 multiple choice questions, and then in Sakai, there's a, an offset dialog. And in that area, you put in the actual grade from the final Crowdmark component to have one thing. Not one perfect thing, but one thing. That's one scenario. Anton, what was your specific scenario? So <clears throat> my scenario is this. I uh, use some for some mathematics course. So there are some numbers to compute. So these numbers are easily marked, and I used uh, uh, quizzes and tools uh, tool on a Sakai. So I program numbers and they calculate numbers. And this is, you don't need marker to concentrate on specific numbers. On the other hand, I also want students to show they know how to get to those numbers, show the ideas. And to mark ideas, you don't really need to concentrate a lot of what a specific numbers are. So this is part which is marked on a, on a crowd mark. Actually, I did it. Uh, I asked students to submit PDFs and uh, 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 TAs were marking PDFs using Acrobat Reader, actually. So mm. this is better because it's. I, I had to instruct students to create PDF files, and here it's easier uh, in terms of media. So, uh, but then uh, how I did it, I created a, a test in the quizzes and tools, some marks which are which are automatically marketed. In the end, I create a file submission, uh, and then they submitted file which was marked. Here I can just create an open question which will be filled on based on the marking of the file on a crowd mark. So this is how I see. Then I can release all the all the marking to the students, no problem. The thing is they would have combined mark for, for two parts. And this is has to be some, on some one place and Sakai is more logical place for this. So this is how I want to do it. Uh, and the idea is to let students to show their workflow, not only end result. Yes, uh, thank you for uh, explaining that. Um, I think you've uh, talked, not only talked through, but demonstrated um, why one might want to take that uh, computer assessed and then one final paper style assessment. Um, and I think uh, having experience of uh, Acrobat, which you know is better than some alternatives, um, still having that single web page uh, greater feedback is uh, ideal. Um, the final bringing home those marks uh, remains a challenge. Uh, you could do it um, hand entering the offset in the quiz. 
Um, but what I would probably do is recommend creating a category in the gradebook, uh, and that category is quiz two. And the two components of the category quiz two are the Sakai quiz and what you would bring home from CrowdMark. And so uh, hopefully students would be uh, intuitively able to interpret that first column is my uh, Sakai component, that second is my CrowdMark, and it would give them a percentage, I believe, uh, of, of their score across the two um, in the gradebook. Does that uh, make sense as a starting point? Uh, anyone from CPI would be happy to work you through the practicals of that. Yes, I think it's a good idea. It's a less hassle to insert grade. So this is probably the way to go. Thank you. Yeah, um, and I think uh, CrowdMark is a, a great tool, great features, great experience, but also not revolutionary. Um, it One of its big uh, tools it adds is it's normalizing students taking pictures and having digital uh, markup responses. Um, just making that an expectation of students is a feature it has and giving the opportunity to practice that and know it'll work when, it, when, when you want expected of them to do it is part of the features that it has. And um, in particular, as Sakai does not have a um, preview markup based uh, grading experience at all, um, CrowdMark is bringing that to us for the first time where your marking group can actually mark up the submitted artifact on the web, not worry about formats and um, if anyone does uh, get a large group of submissions and use the their uh, tablet to do that markup, I'm interested in some feedback what that experience is like because they've definitely uh, engineered it to make sure you don't need a keyboard if you don't want to use a keyboard. So thank you for some great questions. Um, I'm mindful that it's uh, almost the top of the hour and that's uh, the content of our presentation. Um, but if you're interested in CrowdMark at all or further information about it, um, CPI at BrockU, edtech at BrockU.ca, reach out. Anyone from our team would be happy to talk you through it. Um, and uh, more importantly, if you are considering this for your assignment this fall, um, we are very aware of the tight timelines. So if you need uh, any uh, special assistance in that process, please let us know. We really want to help out with that. Jocelyn typing in the chat, but uh, for those uh, 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 concerned with decorum, I'm excusing you if you have other places to go. And if you'd like to stay and ask more specific questions, um, please do. But uh, thank you for uh, your participation thus far. Thanks, everyone. Have a great long weekend.